Red cattle, Annabeth said. The cattle of the sun god. What? I asked. They are sacred to Apollo. Holy cows? Exactly. But what are they doing? Wait, Grover said. Listen. At first, everything seemed quiet, but then I heard it. The distant baying of dar dogs. The sound got louder. Then the underbrush rustled, and two dogs broke through. Except for it wasn't two dogs. It was one dog with two heads. It looked like a greyhound, long and sneaky, with a sleek brown, but its neck veed into two heads, both of them snapping and snarling and generally not glad to see us. Bad Janus dog, Tyson cried. Arf! Grover told it and raised a hand in greeting. The two-headed dog bared its teeth. I guess it wasn't impressed that Grover could speak animal. Then its master lumbered out of the woods, and I realized the dog was the least of our problems. He was a huge guy, with stark white hair, straw cowboy hat, and braided white beard. Kind of like Father Time, and Father Time went redneck and got totally jacked. He was wearing a Don't Mess With Texas t-shirt and a denim jacket with the sleeves ripped off. With his sleeves off, you could see his muscles. On his right bicep was a cross swords tattoo. He held a wooden club about the size of a nuclear warhead with six-inch spikes bristling at the business end. Here, Orpheus, he told the dog. The dog growled at us once more just to make his feelings clear and then circled back to his master's feet. The man looked up at us, then down, keeping his club ready. What do we got here, he said. Cattle rustlers? We're just travelers. Annabeth said. We're on a quest. The man's eye twitched. Half-bloods, eh? I started to say, How do you know? Annabeth put her hand on my arm. I'm Annabeth, daughter of Athena. This is Percy, son of Poseidon. Grover, the satire. Tyson, the... Cyclops, the man finished. Yeah, I can see that. He glowered at me. And I know half-bloods because I am one, sonny. I'm Urethian, the cowherd in this ranch here. Son of Ares, you came through the labyrinth like the other one, I reckon. The other one? I asked. You mean Nico D'Angelo? Oh, he a load of visitors from the labyrinth, Yurton said darkly. Not many ever leave. Wow, I said. I feel welcome. The cowherd glanced behind him and someone was watching. Like, then he lowered his voice. I'm only gonna say this once, demigods. Get back in the maze now before it's too late. We're not leaving, Annabeth insisted. Not until we see this other demigod, please. Yurtine grunted. Then you leave me no choice, Missy. I gotta take you to see the boss. I didn't feel like we were hostage or anything. Yurtine walked alongside us with his club across his shoulder. Orpheus, the two-headed dog, growled a lot and sniffled at Grover's legs and shot into the bushes once in a while to chase the animals. But Yurtine kept him more or less under control. We walked down a dirt path and it seemed to go on forever. It must have been close to 100 degrees, which was a shock after San Francisco. Heat shimmered off the ground. Insects buzzed in the trees. Before we'd gone very far, I was sweating like crazy. Flies swarmed us. Every so often, we'd see a pen full of red cows or even stranger animals. Once we passed a corral where the fence was coated in asbestos. Inside, a herd of fire-breathing horses milled around. The hay in their feeding trough was on fire. The ground smoked around their feet, but the horses seemed tame enough. One big stallion looked at me and whinnied, columns of red flame billowing out of his nostrils. I wondered if it hurt his sinuses. What are they for? I asked. Yurtin scowled. Only way to raise animals for lots of different clients. Apollo, Demetrius, and others. Like who? No more questions. Finally, we came out of the woods. Perched on a hill above us was a big ranch house, all stone white and wood with big windows. It looks like a Frank Lloyd Wright, Annabeth said. I guess she was talking some architectural thing. To me, it just looked like a big place where a few demigods could get into serious trouble. We hiked up the hill. No one break the rules, the Yurtin warned us as we walked up the steps to the front porch. No fighting, no drawing weapons, and don't make any comments about the boss's appearance. Why, I asked. What does he look like? Before Yurtin could reply, a new voice said, Welcome to Triple G Ranch. The man on the porch had a normal head, which was a relief. His face was rather weathered and brown from years in the sun. 
He had slick black hair and a black pencil mustache, like villains in the old movies. He smiled at us, but the smile wasn't friendly. More amused, like, oh boy, more people to torture.